Hi everyone, so in today's video we're going to talk about protecting your headspace from whatever is going on around you when you are writing the USMLE Step 1 exam. So this exam is super emotional, okay? You need to have emotional and mental stamina and stability to write this exam, okay? The last thing you need is to surround yourself with friends or other colleagues that are super stressful, you know who they are, you know what they're like during the exam or during exams in general, and then carry that energy through to you during your examinations, okay? That you need to work on protecting your headspace during this exam. Um, for me, I had certain no-nos. <laughs> do not speak to me about match. Do not speak to me about residencies. Don't, do not speak to me about step two. Do not speak to me about anything that isn't relating to step one in a positive light. And I say this because you are not really 100% in control of what it is your mind decides to be susceptible to during your examinations. So if you're around somebody, and this is just my experience from you know medical school in general, if you're around someone who's always negative and always hating on everything and, oh my goodness, I hate the system, I hate this, I hate that, okay, what are you going to do about it? You can study harder, you can try to do something, like whatever it is in your control that you can do, I'll do, I'll do what I, what's in my control. What's outside of it, I'm not even going to think about it, right? So... This is just an attitude that you can carry through from medical school and carry it into your exam preparation as well. Um, just to kind of put your foot down when it comes down to not accepting any negative, you know, I don't want to say negative vibes or negative energy, but that's really what it is. Just not accepting that into your preparation stage of your exam and your um, dedicated period of your studies. Because you're going to get stressed. You're already stressed. You're already stressed. You don't need to carry other people's stress. So I think for... You know, myself, I don't really have a problem with telling somebody, like, I'm not comfortable talking about this topic. I've had friends who talk to me about match results and getting into a particular competitive specialty. And unless it's something conductive, something that is, you know what I mean, um, I can actually do something with this information, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that neurosurgery has the hardest, um, you know, difficulty, one of the most difficult specialties to get, to get into. I don't want to hear the ophthalmology, nobody gets into that. I don't want to hear that stuff. Like, what am I going to do with it as somebody who hasn't even written step one, for instance, at the time? Okay, so for me, it's just like, is it a matter of, is this information useful? So if it's not, I don't, I don't want to hear it. So if somebody wants to be upset with that, that's fine. I'm here to protect my mental space for an exam that is very draining mentally. It will exhaust you physically, mentally, spiritually. Everything about it is exhausting. That much is true, and nobody is going to argue that. So, um, working on saying no to certain conversations is super important because you're gonna find yourself, you yourself will go down certain rabbit holes on your own. Like you don't need another person's push to to take you down that rabbit hole of asking on Reddit, "What do you do if you pass? What if you do? What what do you do if you fail?" Um, step one, you're gonna do that on your own. You're going to look at these things on your own. So there's enough energy that you need to control yourself and have some self control. Uh, and then, you know, without having to deal with, you know, other people kind of egging you on into that direction anyway. So, you know, I'm not a fan of studying with other people. I did take this exam with my sister and we were studying together. And there was a couple of times where I was annoying her during studying as well. But um, I will say, like, at the very least, we were not doing anything negative or nothing that was going to distract us or hurt us in the long run because this exam requires mental fortitude. OK, so that for me, unless you have that kind of relationship unless you have that kind of study partner who knows not to talk about anything negative, we're here to sit down and be positive and bring out the best in each other, that's fine. If you have somebody who's panicking, like, oh my goodness, I didn't do 80 questions, I didn't do 120 questions today, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? So for me, there's just high stress, positive, and then there's high stress, negative people. Both of them, avoid them both. Uh, for this exam. You want to maintain mental stability. You want to be calm. You want to be collected. This is a super stressful exam. It's totally doable, but you don't want to have the weight of other people's anxieties on your back for this exam. You already have your own anxieties to carry you through this exam and this whole process. So be okay with saying no. Be okay with having your boundaries uh, and just saying, I'm not ready to have this conversation. Just say, let's talk about this later. Say whatever you need to say. Um, to just protect your headspace for this exam. I think that is super, super important. You have to keep in mind something called a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I've seen people who have prophesized that they would fail the exam and they do so. And it's just, I don't want to point it out to them, but it's just like, I could see it. And it's just like, I, you know exactly what you were doing that led you to that point. But you know, you're not gonna criticize them because they're your friends. 
But for me, I would just, okay, you do you, I'll do me. And I will just, you know, prophesize that I'll pass this exam and I'll do everything that I can that's in my power to just get through this and, you know, succeed. Okay. You know what you have to do. You know, there's a lot of questions that you have to solve. You know, you have to read first aid, you know, you have to go through things. Uh, so again, there's a practical aspect. And then there's also this other realm of protecting your headspace and your mindset. And, you know, you're already fighting yourself, who is your own worst enemy is yourself, first of all. And then there's other people as well and their anxieties. And there's just nothing wrong, I think, with just, you know, placing your foot down and saying, not today. Talk to me in two weeks when I'm done my exam. So that's something. That's something that I had to learn anyway for med school because med school had this wave of people who would come after you and share, oh my goodness, I failed. Oh my goodness, I... Uh, and you know what? Which was really funny because we have our marks which were publicly viewable for anybody to see. And then if you went through anybody's marks, you would see that they weren't failing. So sometimes some people had... I don't know what it was that they were having, but they were scoring the top and then they were pretending or whatever it was they were doing as if they were failing. They were not. They were putting in the energy, but so they, I don't know if they were doing it with good or bad intentions, but, you know, just sharing, oversharing anxiety that wasn't really genuine. I would say it wasn't genuine. Uh, so I learned that early on, like, especially when I was in my third year and starting to enter my clinical years, anybody who told me anything, it was in one ear and out the other. If somebody told me gynecology was the hardest subject, I was like, in my mind, it's the easiest subject. Thank you very much. And when I studied it, I scored better in gynecology than I did in pediatrics, even though pediatrics was the best exam I ever wrote in my life. So that's something like that kind of um, skill and protecting your headspace in medical school and then for your exams is something you will have to learn throughout. And just knowing to say no, like if it, if it has to be the point where you close your phone for two weeks, delete your social media for two weeks, and then uh, do your stuff, do your business, finish your exam, succeed, pass, and then say, hey, what's up? Okay, I'm ready to talk to you now. What issues are you having? How can I help you as a friend? But, you know, there's no one who is a true, genuine friend who is going to penalize you for doing what's good for you. That's something that I realized. There's nobody who's going to hurt you. And I'm so glad that my good, good friends um, out there understand this. I understand that about them and we understand that about each other. It's been always a mutual point between us. All the people that I know that are close friends to me have always, we've always respected each other's boundaries when it comes to succeeding. Uh, when it comes to, I know like you're not able to go out today. I know you're not able to do this. Uh, I know that you're striving, succeeding. I'm praying for you. You know, you go girl and you finish up your stuff and then we can talk after. There was nothing, there was never ever this attitude of making somebody feel bad if they missed a birthday party, if they missed something, if they weren't able to. Yet we know that we know what medicine entails. We know the amount of sacrifice that goes into it. Um, and I'm just thankful that I've always had friends that understood this aspect. We've never judged each other for that. Like I can go for months not speaking to somebody and then just I'm just thankful that I can like, you know, call them and say, hey, what's up? And then we understand like oh, I was doing this exam. I was like, good. Did you like, did you do good? Okay, we passed. Okay, great. That's all that matters. If medical school is tough, um, you know, if you find yourself surrounded by people who reprimand you for that or penalize you for that, um, those aren't really your friends, okay? So again, like I'm so thankful for the kind of small, close knit group of people that I know uh, who are, you know, patient with me and I'm patient with them in, ter in turn. And it's just a good, you know, fruitful friendship uh, that, you know, supports each other's success. And that's super important. So you have to have that in medical school carry that through into your examinations. Uh, that's super important. Like somebody's gonna make you feel bad that you didn't uh, attend something important for them and you're in your dedicated period of your exam. What do you do? Like, it's, it's difficult, but you have to, you know, put your foot down and say, you know, I'm really, really sorry. I wish I could be there, but I have something important. And, you know, put your headspace and prioritize your success and putting, you know, yourself, trying to do what's good for yourself. And then realizing at the end, like when you're doing good, you're also gonna help, you know, other people as well. So that's just something, it, it just, comes back to everybody at the end, right? If everyone's succeeding, that's just how it is with success. So um, again, you know, put your boundaries, make sure, you know, everything is safe in your head and you're not overwhelming yourself with anxiety that's needless. There's a lot of needless anxiety for this exam. It is an emotional exam. Uh, it is not just a knowledge-based one. It's testing your fortitude, your mental stability, your ability to sit down for eight hours and write this exam, right? You, you need to believe in yourself. Every single question that you do, all 300 whatever questions there are, you need to believe that you did the right thing and you put the right choice. And the last thing you need is just reading about failing on Reddit the night before or having a friend who's going to tell you, oh my goodness, we're not going to match into the specialty. Like those are things we can worry about that when it's time to worry about that. But if you haven't even written the exam yet and you're already hyping yourself up with that much anxiety, it's going to affect you in the long run and it's going to hurt your feelings and it's going to hurt your performance. Okay, so put your boundaries, don't be shy.
when it comes to doing that. Um, again, it's something that you have to learn to do throughout medical school in general uh, and after you graduate and write your professional exams and your licensing exams and things like that. So I uh, hope you find that, that close circle of people who respect you and respect your success and respect their success um, and uh, also don't uh, penalize you for that and people who you know, are able to support you when you are putting boundaries in place and doing what's best for you. So uh, that's just my advice. Uh, not, not really the friendliest, I think, maybe, but it's the honest, hard truth uh, of medical school in general and just medicine as a career. So that's what it is. So I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any uh, questions or any advice you'd like me to give you, um, uh, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to try to share my little wisdom with you. So I'll see you guys in the next video.